Hey guys, Level Cap here, and welcome to another episode of Sniper Sunday, the series where we're gonna be playing this scout class in Battlefield 1, talking about things you can do to improve your performance and going over specific sniper rifles and tactics. Today, we will be focusing on the M95 sniper rifle. This one is an interesting sniper rifle, and I thought I would cover it because it's not like the other snipers. It does not have a sweet spot, so uh, it's giving up a very, very powerful mechanic that the other sniper rifles have, but it does have some other things going for it uh, that could put it ahead in other areas. I know some people really like this sniper rifle a lot, so I thought I would really give it a run through and see how I liked it. Now, if you've been watching my Battlefield 1 content, you'll know that the sweet spot mechanic is very, very important for snipers in this game as it dictates where you can one-shot kill somebody or rather how far away you have to be from somebody to get a one-shot kill. Each rifle has a different sweet spot, so under Understanding that sweet spot and where you want to be is pretty important and it can be a little bit complicated at times uh, Especially if you don't really understand how far away you are from your opponent Now if you want to disregard the sweet spot mechanic altogether and go back to a, a time of Battlefield 4 style sniping where there was no sweet spot all sniper rifles did the maximum damage in close quarters and had a certain drop-off then the M95 is your type of sniper rifle and although it doesn't have a sweet spot it does have some cool benefits First of all, it'll be doing 90 damage in close quarters. That's 20 meters or closer when you body shot somebody. The only other sniper rifle that can pull that off is the Martini Henry. Everything else will be doing 80 damage in close quarters, which means you could need an extra shot to finish somebody off depending on what your sidearm is. In addition to which, it's the fastest firing sniper rifles, not including the M1903 Experimental, which isn't really a sniper rifle, and the Russian 1895 Trench, which has got a very interesting damage property and doesn't do good damage at range. So this is uh, for a traditional style sniper rifle, the fastest firing one out there. And it's also got one of the best reloads in the game because instead of having to individually load each round like you do with the other rifles unless you uh, are putting in a clip of five rounds at a time, this one just ejects all the rounds you have left in the gun and you automatically load a five round clip each time. So the reload is very fast and you don't have to reload on the perfect marker to get that five round clip fast reload. It just is a bit more versatile in the reload department. Now the downside to this rifle is that there's no variant with a higher magnification optic. This is all you get with the marksman variant, so you're not going to get any sort of eight times magnification or ten times magnification optic, and that can definitely be a letdown for some people. Sure, you're not going to have scope glint at range, which is nice, but at the same time you're also not going to have the accuracy. And considering how important headshots are with this rifle for getting those one-shot kills, having a higher magnification would be very useful. And unfortunately, Unfortunately, the marksman variant of this rifle doesn't have particularly great hip fire, so the dream of the aggressive recon isn't going to be too good with this rifle. But if you use the carbine version of the M95, you're going to get much better hip fire. You're just going to lose your magnified optic altogether. Now, the relationship between this traditional style damage model sniper rifle and the other ones in the game is pretty interesting. It's pretty hard to argue against using a sniper rifle with a sweet spot because it's just going to give you a one shot kill a lot of the time. It's why I like the SMLE so much. The sweet spot is just so good on that rifle, and it gives you uh, the ability to not have to aim for headshots all the time. Whereas this one, uh, to do really well with, you're going to have to go for the headshots more often than not, and that kind of affects which targets you might be able to go for. The uh, upside to this rifle, though, is if you are an incredible sniper, like world's best sniper, or you're just really, really good, like top 1% sniper out there, um, and you're hitting headshots all all the time back to back to back. The benefits you'll get from this rifle are a faster rate of fire and a faster reload, which means you'll be able to engage opponents quicker and you'll have less downtime between reloads. So ultimately it could be a benefit provided that your accuracy is absolutely insane. However, if you're sort of uh, maybe top 10% snipers out there or you're just a mediocre sniper, you will absolutely want to be taking advantage of a sniper rifle that has the sweet spot mechanic, which is most of the sniper rifles luckily just the M95 is the one that's sort of the MLG Pro if you're too good for that sweet spot mechanic then you can definitely use this rifle and it's also got the benefit of just being a straightforward rifle especially if you're used to the way things used to be in Battlefield you can pick this up and you'll have no problem getting used to it of course the suppression mechanic
mechanics are a bit stronger in Battlefield 1, so that might throw you for a little bit of a loop, but uh, that's just one of the learning curves of this game. Of course, you see me running with my trusty 1911 sidearm here. I have, without question, got way more kills with the sidearm than any other handgun in the game. I love running the 1911 on all classes. It's absolutely great with the sniper class as well. Usually does enough damage in close quarters to finish off somebody that I hit with a one shot from a bolt action or lever action rifle. One of the nice relationships between the M1911 and this rifle, especially in close quarters, is that the minimum damage you can do with this rifle in close quarters is actually around 67 if you shoot somebody in the arm by accident. And this can be a perfectly aimed shot, but if their arm is in the way of their body, it'll only do a reduced amount of damage at 67, which means the M1911 in close quarters will still be able to finish them off with a single shot. So that does happen with a lot of rifles out there, and if you have some of the lesser damage damaging handguns, you might actually have to hit them twice to finish them off. Pairing your sidearm with your sniper rifle is probably the most important sidearm primary pairing that you can do in this game, and it really makes sense to try and pay attention to how much the maximum damage of your rifle does in close quarters, or what the body part multipliers can be and stuff like that. It actually gets a bit technical, and there can be a lot of argument for specific sidearms being much better than others depending on the primary, but mostly just with the scout class. Other classes out there like shotguns or people with machine guns or SMGs, your sidearm probably doesn't matter as much. Just pick one that you're good with and that you like to run with. Now the other trick to playing the scout class is picking the scout class when it makes sense. Now you could be one of those players who's like, oh, I'm only going to snipe all the time forever, which is fine, and if you get really good with the sniper, you can figure it out. But the main trick to using the scout class is using it on maps that make sense to use it on or using it in situations where it makes sense. If you cannot control the distance between you and your opponent, it doesn't make sense to use a bolt action rifle. Everything else is going to out damage this or outperform it in close quarters. Um, you want to be at either a sweet spot area or with this rifle, since there is no sweet spot, just a distance at which you can uh, have the advantage. You want to have the advantage over a medic, which means you're going to have to be a decent distance away. You want to be able to zoom in and get those headshots on your opponent before they can damage you down. And uh, that doesn't leave you a lot of flexibility. I would say like 40 meters or closer is a bit too close for most situations. Or if you've got uh, something like a pillbox like I do here, you can be maybe a little bit more aggressive with it since you're only exposing your sort of torso and head to your opponent. But uh, basically controlling your engagement distance. Playing on operations game modes is excellent for sniping in this game. In fact, I think it's my favorite way to snipe in this game because uh, if you're playing defensively, you can stay further back. If you're playing offensively, you can sort of stay in the midfield somewhere, provide a good spawn location for your squad mates and start taking people out that are uh, playing defensively or clearing out pillboxes. Now as for gadgets, last time I ran with the trench scope, this time I've gone back to sort of my standard loadout of running with a K bullet and flare. I think the flare is without question the most useful gadget you can have for the scout class. I can't think of anything else I would rather run with. Um, if you're playing defensively, I would say you could switch out the K bullet for like maybe a trip mine and uh, put that on the flag or in a good spot to just take out enemies or even block off an entrance to a place that you're sniping from. Like if I put one at the entrance of this pillbox, if somebody tried to sneak up behind me, they would hit my trip font mine first and at least give me a warning uh, as to somebody's coming. So uh, I would say K-Bullet and Trip Mine are good alternate gadgets to run with. Um, the Trench Scope is good. I know a lot of people really like that and uh, it's excellent for spotting out enemies. It's really more situational though. I don't use it all the time and I just like having something that can do good damage to vehicles in close quarters. Light tanks especially will go down pretty quickly to K-Bullets, not on their own, but you can definitely be somebody who's providing the finishing kill damage on uh, some of the more lightly armored vehicles. Even heavy tanks, you can at least annoy them and stop their rep cycle. And also, K-Bullets are pretty fun for shooting, flying by airplanes, disabling engines, and stuff like that. You can actually be pretty darn effective and take an entire aircraft out of the sky uh, before they realize that they've been disabled. Anyway, that pretty much wraps it up for today's episode of Sniper Sunday. The Scout class continues to be one of my current favorite classes to play, at least in the operations game mode. It is just so much fun to play. You can rack up tons of kills. You can take out vehicles. You can spot for your teammates. It's a very, very versatile and effective class. I love it a lot. As always, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Sniper Sunday, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing out. <laughs>